Good evening, welcome all. Uh, on behalf of Lalgar Kohun College, Department of English, I do Ibran Mitro, Assistant Professor of English, welcome you all to this uh, second online lecture series that is tailor-made for our fourth semester English honor students. Today we have got a special guest among us, Dr. Ujjal Kumar Panda, who is an Assistant Professor in the WBES and the head in the Department of English at Government General Degree College, Datan 2. Uh, before starting our lecture series, I would request our YC sir, Professor Vishesha Chakravarti, to deliver a uh, welcome address to the participants. So thank you, Doipan. I welcome all, welcome you all in this uh, today's session when we will be having a special talk on Shem Subhadarai's Funny Boy by Dr. Ujjal Panda. Ujjal, Dr. Ujjal Panda has obtained his PhD degree from Vidyashagar University and he has published widely in national and international levels. Uh, so he, his work is especially on modern poetry, Sima Shini and Philip Larkin. Other than this, he has many wide uh, international publications coming from the houses of Rutledge. Uh, he has also published in the University Press, Dhaka. And he is very soon, he will be having a, a monograph to be published uh, from the Oxford University Press. So the details, uh, uh, Rahul sir will be introducing to our students about our honorable speaker. I thank him for uh, being able to make time uh, to deliver a talk for our students, particularly designed. Uh, and this is a lecture series which has been particularly designed for the benefit of our students with a uh, view uh, to uh, input into them some uh, clues which they will be uh, able to utilize. I, we hope so that they will be able to utilize later on when they will pursue their higher studies. So with these few words and not wasting any time, so I uh, formally uh, welcome Ujjal, Dr. Ujjal Panda and other participants from our colleges as well as colleges from other institutions. And I would request Rahul sir to introduce to the audience Dr. Ujjal Panda. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, um, I am Rahul Burua from Government Genetic College, Lalgo. And I would like to welcome everyone who have participated in this lecture series. And I would also like to welcome Ujjal, sir, Dr. Ujjal Kumar Sanda uh, for this lecture series. And, uh, I would like to introduce him. Dr. Ujjal Kumar Panda is an professor in UPS. And he is the head uh, in the Department of English at Government General Degree College, Dantun 2. He completed his PhD on the works of Sima Sini and Philip Larkin from Vidyashaguri University in 2017. And he had published numerously in different journals and books. Some of his important publications include a chapter entitled Tropical Diseases and Helpless Colonial Responses, Medical Humanism in Green's Journey Without Maps and Parallels, The Seas of Vishnupur, published in Imperial Maladies, Literature on Healthcare and Psychoanalysis in India, 2017 by Nova Science Publishers, New York, USA. Uh, a book chapter entitled Psychogeographies, Urban Space and Situationism in Shukhu Mehta's Maximum City, Bombay Lost and Found in the City Speaks, Urban Spaces in Indian Literature, and Education and its Discontents, 
representation of liminal cultural space in Chinua Achibe's no longer that is in Chinua Achibe, Voice and Vision, University Press, Haka 2022. He had other publications as, as well, uh, like Sin of Place, a humanistic geographical approach to the themes of place, memory, and displacement in Bob Dylan's songs. He has also co authored a monograph named Geographical Imaginations, Literature, and the Special Turn, which will be published by OUP New York in 2022. Uh, I am grateful, not me only, but our whole department, as well as the students of Lalgaon Government College, to have among us Dr. Uttar Kumar Pandya, and I would request him to uh, start his lecture on Anibar, and we are eagerly waiting for this lecture. Over to Ujjal sir. Sir, I am extremely sorry that I cannot uh, start my video option due to some personal reason. I am extremely sorry. To everyone for that thing. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, she's like an elder brother to me, and she was a senior uh, in the Department of English, uh, uh, and she is now the officer in the World Government Geology College. Uh, I accept the Department of English uh, for uh, inviting me today uh, to discuss this on Funny Boy by Shamsil Bhadurai. This is a popular literature course designed for the students of English honor. Uh, now, <clears throat> today, uh, I will try to be uh, very simple in my uh, approach towards Sam uh, Salvadurai's uh, funny boy uh, because the book is open to multi layered interpretation, uh, describing the coming of age of a seven year old gay boy, uh, Arjun or RG as uh, he is called in the historically turbid time of. Uh, Sri Lankan Civil War in the 1980s. There are uh, two main kinds of, uh, that actually uh, mark the thing. Uh, the first one is the idea of queerness or the position of the gay or the homosexual uh, in the heteronormative society. And uh, Secondly, uh, there is a kind of socio-cultural and political reality uh, of Sri Lanka in the 1980s, uh, which, as we know, it started decades of ethnic clashes between the two dominant groups over there, uh, the uh, majoritarian uh, majority and the Sri Lankan Tamil, and it eventually resulted into the uh, Sri Lankan civil war that lasted uh, from 1983 to 2009. So, this particular novel, which was published in 1994 and became a bestseller, uh, it has many important issues to address. Uh, from that point of view. Now, Sam Salvadurai, uh, as we have already understood, uh, is a Sri Lankan writer. Rather, he is a Sri Lankan uh, Canadian novelist who was born in Sri Lanka but currently lives in Toronto. Okay. Now, when Salvadurai was 19 years of age, uh, his family migrated to Canada uh, during the ethnic riots of 1983. Now, these riots were a trigger uh, when uh, the Tamils actually, uh, rather the Tamil militant group, 
uh, the liberation divers of Tamil Ilam, LTTE, as you know, attacked and killed several soldiers of the Sri Lankan army uh, in 1982. And in uh, response to this incident, anti-Tamil riots broke out, firstly in Colombo, and then it actually spread to the country all over the island. Now, this particular incident uh, it started the civil war or a kind of unrest between the uh, Sinhalese majorities and the Tamil minorities in Sri Lanka. Now, although this particular incident, so the killings of uh, 13 uh, soldiers, of the Sri Lankan army by the Tamil militants. Uh, although it started the civil war, or it, is, it was the beginning of the civil war, there was a kind of sense of inimicality uh, between the Tamils and the Sinhalese uh, from the colonial period. Although the brutal ethnic conflict between the Tamils and the Sinhalese broke out in Sri Lanka in 1980. Historians have located uh, the root of this unrest in the colonial history. Because as we know, Sri Lanka, like our own country, uh, it was under the British imperial control from 1815 to 1948. Although Sri Lanka is mainly a country of the Sinhalese, many Tamil Hindus had immigrated to Sri Lanka since the 11th century. However, the immigration of the Tamils intensified during the colonial period because the British rulers, uh, they actually uh, hired many Tamil, poor Tamil Hindus as laborers in the plantations over there. Okay. Now, after Sri Lanka got independent, the Sinhalese, uh, who were the majority, started to pass laws that actually Tamils found very discriminating for them. And this kind of sense of discrimination or a sense of a kind of transcendence of belonging uh, led to the formation of the Tamil militant group LTT as I have already mentioned. And LTT was formed in 1976 by Hillu like Prabhakaran and uh, it may be considered that this kind of uh, militant insurgency was a result of this ethnic tension between the Sinhalese and the Tamils. Now, under the patronization of the LTT, the Sri Lankan Tamil dreamed for a separate Tamil nation in the northeastern part of the island, centering particularly around the Jaffna region and their clash with the Sri Lankan armed forces became almost inevitable. Okay. Actually, oppression against Sri Lankan Tamils uh, was continued by the Sinhalese mob, notably during the 1977 anti-Tamil program. Then, uh, uh, in 1981, uh, when a public library in Jaffna was burned, by the Sinhalese. Uh, Jaffna is a, is, a, is a particular place uh, where most of the Tamils used to live then. So it is a place uh, where the Tamils were the dominant ethnic group. Now, Sinhalese, they actually bound a public library of the Tamils in Jaffna in 19. 81. And it was followed by the infamous 
uh, week long July 1983 anti Tamil program, uh, which is uh, referred to as the Black July in the history of Sri Lanka. And a glaring description of this particular event, uh, the week long unrest known as the Black July of 1983. It has been given a very brilliant description by Salvadorai in in funny book. Now, this intermittent uh, acts of violence or uh, clashes uh, escalated gradually into a full-scale nationwide insurgency, which started the Sri Lankan civil war and that lasted, as I have already told you from 1983 uh, up to 2009. So, from that point of view, it is more than a necessity for us to contextualize Funny Boy because this is conceived like a Bildung Soman of a boy who has a marginal subject position from two different uh, perspectives. And from that point of view, this subject position is doubly dispossessed to him because RG is a Tamil in the Sinhalese Sri Lanka and at the same time, he is a homosexual, a dominantly heterosexual society. Okay. Now, in Funny Boy, if we go to the novel, uh, we may find that in Funny Boy, uh, through minor incidents in the family, Selvadurai has beautifully established uh, the concept of gender, which is essentially a social construct. Now, from the very first chapter on it, actually the book is divided into uh, six chapters as we know. The first chapter is very importantly entitled Kids Don't Fight. Okay. Or it in a way refers to the essential difference of the boy, boy hero or the protagonist, Arjun or Arji, uh, from the uh, dominant discourse of the society by dint of his being a homosexual in a heteronormative society or in a society which actually succumbs to the so-called patriarchal assignations of gender roles. So there is a clear bifurcation between the male roles and the female roles. And there is a kind of rejection of every other alternative sexual definition. Now, if we go to the text, we may find that uh, through minor incidents, the subject position or disturbed subject position of a particular person, here the person is a 7 year old boy whose name is Archie and he lives in a big family in Colombo and his family belongs to the Tamil community and from that point of view his subject position as I have told you is doubly difficult. He belongs to the ethnic minority and at the same time he is uh, a person with alternative sexual aspects. Now if the basic concern of the novel remains the queerness of Archie and his discovery of a Double self identity, then we have to keep it in our mind that sexuality, like gender, is itself a cultural concept. Now, I have referred to the term queer, and it is uh, necessary to know the uh, meaning of this particular term queer. Now, queer is a sort of umbrella term uh, for sexual and gender minorities 
who are not heterosexual or are not his gender now the society uh, considers heterosexuality as the normal sexual expression and who is that actually be uh, outside that that particular accepted law can be considered to be something very strange very queer very peculiar actually the word queer means strange or peculiar or weird but later it was of an use to describe those men and women who were interested in people of the same sex now by the 19th century the word queer was used to define or describe men who were more feminine than masculine and who were believed to have had same sex relationships in short it began to acquire the connotation of men engaged in homosexual relationships now during the late 19th century homosexuality began to be recognized as a category of people with non heterosexual needs and these developed a male gay subculture that included distinct subcategories such as queer fairy red and gay needless to say that these are all derogatory ta when we are actually calling person with alternative sexual orientation uh, to be someone who is strange or queer or peculiar we are in a way using derogatory remark okay, to describe that particular past okay so needless to say these are all derogatory terms to describe people who do not conform to the patriarchal assignation of gender roles or who actually stay beyond the ambit of a heteronormative gradually as we know the hem- homosexual identity came to be replaced by a gay identity and from 1970s onwards gay is considered to be more of an umbrella term that included gay men lesbian women bisexual men and women as well as transsexual or gender non conformist gay and lesbian studies arose on the heels of these important ideas related to alternative sexual expression from the point of view gay and lesbian studies explore the representative uh, repressive mechanism imposed by mainstream heterosexual guilt over gay and lesbian desire so whenever we are trying to understand a text uh, or a gay text uh, which is uh, known as the uh, gay text uh, in the sphere of gay and lesbian people so whenever we are trying to go through a gay text we have to understand that there is a kind of uh to begin the patriarchal assignation of gender roles as well as against the essential heteronormative uh, nature of the society and culture now the gay writer as salvador himsel is openly gay and he uh, lives in Toronto uh, with his partner. Uh, he actually wants to establish a particular particular place in the society for the gay. Uh, this is time and again uh, denied by the uh, patriarchal society. And from that point of view, the repressive mechanism 
which is imposed by mainstream heterosexual belief over gay and lesbian desire is a very important thing in funny boy also. Not only that, uh, this book also refers to the rich heritage of gay and lesbian work that uh, exists, exists nevertheless. At the same time, uh, the book is also a very important work describing the essential instability of all gender identities in general. Okay. Now, queer criticism explodes issues of gender and sexuality from an anti uh, heterosexist and anti homophobic point of view. So, what is homophobia? The fear of the homosexual okay. in a society. Now, uh, whenever we are going to judge the book or examine the book Funny Boy by Sam Salvador, we have to keep these two standpoints in mind. That firstly, it is a book that is actually trying to establish the uh, essential place uh, of a gay person in our society and the trial and tribulation that he or she has to undergo uh, when uh, he or she tries to express her alternative desire in a male dominated heterosexual society who actually uh, uh, which actually that the homosexual uh, is derogatory term like gay, queer, uh, or uh, or faggot. Okay. Now, Judith Butler very importantly argues in Bodies That Matter. Uh, the full title of the book is The Bodies That Matter uh, on the Discursive Limits of Sex. Uh, it was published in 1992 and quoting from the book. Uh, Judith Butler uh, comments, I quote, Queer is the discursive rallying point of younger lesbians and gays and for bisexuals and straight for whom the term expresses an affiliation with anti-homophobic policy. So, a gay text has a kind of propaganda. It has a kind of parka. Whenever a gay writer is trying to refer to the uh, <coughs> fears of injustice in the name of uh, sexual uh, normals or behavioral normals. Uh, and Whenever he is writing a book, he is trying to establish that lost, lost position for the people belonging to the alternative sexual form. Okay. Be it a gay or a lesbian or a transgender or uh, a bisexual or in short the so called LGBTQ movement. Uh, that became very popular from the 1970s onwards. So, funny boy, from that point of view, it has also a kind of socio-cultural agenda. RG is not only a boy who is suffering from the problem of being a uh, homosexual in the heterosexual society. He is also a kind of mouthpiece of all those people who had to uh, feel the uh, or endure the social stigma for being a homosexual in a heteronormative way. Now, funny boy, as I have told you, it is structured like a Bildungsdom. Now, what is Bildungsdom? We are well acquainted with the term Bildungsdom is actually that kind of novel where uh, the writer actually uh, 
records the growth of a particular person from childhood to maturity to galaxy of experience okay. now we are also we actually find a boy hero who is only uh, even years of age and this boy uh, does not know what is his problem because uh, he is a homosexual and these kind of things from that point of view uh, are natural to him but he does not know why uh, his behavior are not accepted as normal by his family members and by the society in general okay. now to his own experience to his own uh, epiphanic revelation finally he uh, comes vis-a-vis -vis his own sexual identity towards the end of the at the same time he uh, becomes conscious of the essential uh, essential inimicality between two ethnic groups in the Sri Lankan society that actually resulted in their migration from the country in the 19th century. So, he is becoming a conscious person, socially, from the perspective of his own gender, and he comes in term, in, in, in term of the uh, in terms of the uh, politics of the island, that is Sri Lanka. So, as a person, R.G. grows to the chapter. When, the, uh, when we first meet R.G. Uh, in the first chapter, we can understand why he is not welcome with his bride bride game with the girl. Uh, in the interiors of the houses, but he does not know whether it is natural or unnatural. So called, uh, uh, it is it, it is a so called abnormal behavior, as it is considered by the patriarchal society. Now, he actually takes a journey from innocence to experience. And when the book closes, we find a more enlightened, a more matured protagonist who now understands his essential difference from the majoritarian ideas in the society, both from his sexual uh, perspective and from his ethnic point of view. So he is sexually uh, uh, an outsider as well as ethnically a marginalized in the dominant uh, subject position of the state. So this kind of idea that Honey Boy is a Bildung woman which registers the growth of a particular person from childhood to maturity, it is actually not a very simple gathering of natural knowledge. It is a kind of gathering of knowledge which is full of uneasiness, which is full of discomfort because RG is knowing about something which is not very, uh, very comforting, very, uh, very affording to him. He is discovering his homosexuality, he is discovering his uh, marginal uh, ethnic group and at the same time he is an eyewitness of the black July of 1986 where the Tamil households were being vandalized by the Sinhalese and uh, in the novel also Arjit's father decides to migrate from Sri Lanka to Canada to save the honor uh, or more suitably save the life of his own family. So, Arjee's childhood is not a normal child. 
and are his childhood is a troubled child and to the troubles and trials of life he finally uh, reaches the point where he can understand what is right and what is wrong in a society which has come assigned views on sexuality as well as on political and ethnic identity in general now uh, the very first chapter or the title of the very first chapter that is pigs don't fly itself refers to the essential difference of argy from the heteronormative society okay as i have already told incidentally the book honey boy is uh, divided into six chapters first one is entitled pigs don't fly second one is called radha anti third one is see no evil hear no evil uh, for uh, the fourth uh, chapter is entitled small choice the fifth one is called the best school of all and six the sixth uh, sixth chapter or the final chapter uh, is very importantly entitled riot journal and epic hero okay so the book is a kind of is a kind of journey journey book both physically as well as uh, it is a kind of psychological chart a kind of quest in it because uh, the boy he is actually making a journey not only from sri lanka to canada he is also making a journey from a dominant district to a kind of marginal subject of Here, he is actually torn between the two worlds, or he is liminal between different opposing sensibilities that dominate the society in general. Now, if we uh, if we actually uh, go to the very first chapter of this particular novel. we can easily understand the essential politics of gender okay that is very rampant in our society now in pig don't fight uh, we come across the paint the days ceremony or paint the days event rather which is a kind of family meet up that the Silva Ratnam or the family of RG, uh, the family of of RG, uh, they organize on a Sunday of every month at RG's grandparents' house, which has a particular allure for RG because this particular day is free from parental control. They are the little children. They are allowed to do whatever they want without any uh, control of the parents. Now, uh, in this particular paint the day event, RG had the opportunity to. play his favorite bride bride game so what is bride bride game bride bride game is actually a childish marriage game where children they used to dress up like a bride okay. now it becomes quite obvious from the initial stage itself that rg neither subscribe to or nor he is associated with the traditional and normative role that patriarchal society imposes uh, on both men and women 
and that is precisely why Arjee's inclination towards the girl's faces make him funny in the eyes of his family mates. But interestingly, the title "Funny Boy" refers to a boy who is funny. Now, why is Arjee funny? Arjee is funny because he does not conform to the demand of the male dominated society or the kind of dominant heterosexual society he does not conform to the rules and norms set by the heteronormative society because when it is a normality that a boy will play outdoor games it is also a kind of normal behavior for a girl to play indoor games actually the society expects these things from a male child and a female child respectively now interestingly while rg's brother is a superstar in the cricket ground rg does not like to play cricket so from the very beginning of the uh, novel the essential difference between rg's world and the world of his brother or world in general has been very beautifully put by salvador okay and the chapter title is also important from that point of view where it is uh said that a pig can't fly so it is uh important the chapter title is important from two different perspectives firstly it situates the essential difference of rg from other boys in the family or other girls in the family who are normal according to the society because they are heterosexual on the other hand it also refers to the essential absurdity of the heteronormative ideas which actually considers homosexuality to be something abnormal because the dominant sexual identity in the society is that of heterosexuality so pigs don't fly situates the difference of rg from the from the other uh, from the dominant discourse of the society at the same time it actually refers to the inability of the heterosexual society to interpret the homosexual need, needs and homosexual dreams okay now the society which forms the backdrop of the novel like most of the societies in the world uh, is unequivocally patriarchal we can well understand the fact and in patriarchy hides in binary the front garden the road and quoting from the book the front garden the road and the field belongs to the boys the front garden the road and the field belongs to the boys so i have already told you that this is actually that kind of that kind of uh that kind of attempt to draw a kind of line between what is normal and what is abnormal because patriarchy it is actually based upon it is actually based upon the uh, idea of the binary where you have to make a person other because he does not conform to the rules and regulation set by you now a boy is expected to dominate the front garden the lawn uh, the field the road 
because the boys are made for the world and uh, girls are made for the home so there must be a kind of difference between the home and the world and there is actually a kind of shadow line between what is normal and what is what is abnormal so whoever dares to cross that shadow line between normalcy and the abnormal he may be considered to be someone who is funny so why he is funny he is funny because he is a garly boy quote unquote garly boy so he was called a garly boy by other family members because he is a boy uh, in his bodily attributes but he behaves like a girl or he is an effeminate boy from that point of view okay now uh, the roles and spaces in the society they are well defined for the boys as well as well as for the girls and from that point of view the front garden the road the field belong to the boys and the girls territory was very interestingly the girls territory was the inside and the kitchen okay now this kind of this kind of segregation uh, of spaces is a reflection of how patriarchy has domesticated women over the centuries however the presence of rg in the girls world is anticipatory of a disruption in his in this neat patriarchal arrangement so when rg was more inclined to play with the girls or dress up like a girl we can expect a kind of disruption of this kind of neat patriarchal arrangement moreover girls world uh, uh, is something that can be a matter of insult for a boy who enters into it according to patriarchy because girls world according to the patriarchal beliefs it is a kind of world that is marked by inferiority the boy is world the cricket ground is a uh, more heroic place than the place which is actually being used uh, for playing bright bright game now uh, the boy rg uh, or such inclination he was being considered to be someone who is unnatural because the society and the family actually conforms to the society he belonged to a kind of homophobic and heteronormative uh, society and this particular kind of society is often prone to punish a boy who is funny who is unnatural and towards the end of the chapter we find that when mother comes to know about such uh, so called ab- abnormality in rg he actually bars him from playing the bright bright game okay. and even uh, rg was forced to play cricket with his brother in the playground so the very first chapter of this particular novel establishes the essential uh, a 
potential difference of Rg from the uh, heteronormative world. At the same time, we can well understand the kind of treatment a homosexual uh, generally uh, receives in the dominantly heterosexual society. Now, uh, the next chapter, uh, which is entitled Radha Anji, is another chapter where we can assume that this kind of abnormality in the eyes of the family members or in the eyes of the uh, society is not at all a kind of abnormal behavior to the protagonist because homosexuality is natural for him. Rather, the heterosexual society is abnormal for him. And he actually uh, loves to read women's magazines. He loves to read uh, little women comics. And all these uh, all these things establish that his homosexuality is not abnormal for him. It is abnormal or a matter of concern for his family members only. And this kind of uh, hostile behavior on part of the family members and on part of his own parents begins to subside with the arrival of Radha Anti. So who is Radha Anti? Radha Anti is Arji's paternal aunt who has recently returned from America. Much to Arji's shock, Radha Anti looks and behaves very differently from his imagined ideal of Sri Lankan femininity. Now, Arji had a kind of idea about Radha Anti when he heard about her arrival in the family. He thought that she will be like a Sri Lankan film actress. Okay. And she will be very calm, very fair in complexion. But when she arrives, she strikes RG with her uh, difference. She is described as thin, not plump, I am putting from the book, and flat like a boy. And she was not dressing herself with traditional Sri Lankan dresses. She was rather dressed in Western clothes. Okay. Now, when Radha Anti arrives, Rajan Navindra, a Tamil man, and he is a very well established person in the US and the family wants her to marry uh, Rajan uh, in near future. But we find that Radha Anti uh, uh, falls in love with a Sinhalese man and his name is uh, Onil Joy Singhye and she wants to marry this man and it creates a trouble in the family. Finally, uh, Radha Anti actually uh, leaves the company of this single uh, man because uh, she was on her way to Jaffna and Jaffna was very uh, was a very troubled place uh, at that time and somehow uh, he actually uh, was caught in a broil and was injured by the Singhalese mob. Okay. So, chapter 2 Radha Anti, it is important because Radha Anti 
was the only person who did not mind when R.G. tried to dress like a woman or when R.G. loved to read the comic book meant for the past. Because she is, she, she, grew, grew, she, was grew, she grew in America or the U.S. where by then homosexuality was almost uh, an accepted sexual preference. So when he found R.G. to be someone with alternative sexual behavior, he did not actually mind yet. And this actually made Radha and he a very dear person to us. Now, Arji's idea of life is changing to the chapter. In this chapter, we find Arji to be more <laughs> painfully aware of his essential difference uh, from the others. At the same time, we find that there is actually a kind of hidden layer of tension between the Singhalis and the and the Tamils. And as a result, uh, Radha Anji was not able to marry uh, the person he loved because he belongs to a different community and she belongs to a community that is hostile to that particular person. So, from the second chapter onward, we actually understand the two main signposts, as I have already told you, uh, in the particular, uh, uh, in this particular novel. The first one is the alternative sexuality of this boy and the second one is actually the ethnic tension in Sri Lanka in the 1980s that led to the civil war. Now, in the third chapter, see no evil, uh, hear no evil, the theme of ethnic tension uh, intensifies. Okay. Now, here we find Uncle David who returns to Sri Lanka from Australia uh, and this man is a burger who grew up in Sri Lanka with Amma and he is a journalist and has been in Australia for more than 10 years when he returns to Sri Lanka. Okay. Now, he has returned to Sri Lanka for what? and primary to look into whether the government of Sri Lanka has been abusing its power under the Prevention of Terrorism Act against the Tamils. Now, Daryl reads Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. As he claims, he has an affinity with the book and of course, he is laughed at by R.G.'s entire family. Daryl Uncle then goes on to buy for R.G. the sequels of Little Women and this makes R.G. very happy. Okay. So Daryl Uncle who was in Australia for 10 years, he has no such prejudice that a particular kind of book is mentioned for uh, women and the other set of work is mentioned for, for the boy. He is a man, but he loves to read little women's stories. And this actually makes R.G. happy and brings him closer to Uncle Daryl. But unfortunately, Uncle Daryl was a reporter and he went to Tafna. And one day, his dead body comes. Although the police 
uh, informs that Daryl died in an accident. We can easily understand that he was killed because of his investigative journalism. So, tragedy took place frequent in this particular book because it is a war that actually describes a very turbulent time in the history of Kula. Okay. Now, in the in the in the fourth chapter, small choices, the atmosphere of hatred between the Sinhalese and the and the Tamils intensifies. Because here we see that Arji's father gives a job to his friend, a friend's son, Jagan Parameswaran, uh, at his hotel, because uh, Arji's father was in uh, associated with hotel business in college. And uh, this particular boy, Jagan, apparently had ties with the LTTE earlier. But he claims that he does not have any uh, relation to the LTT at present. Jagan and RG became good friends, and RG becomes a little more aware of his sexuality when he actually comes in contact with Jagan. Meanwhile, the tension between the two communities, the Tamils and the Singhali uh, continues to rise till Jagan is said to have been plotting to kill a Tamil politician. Now, Arji's father immediately hires Jagan from his hotel and Arji becomes lonely again. So, Whenever here comes a person who understands R.G. and his alternative sexuality, like Radha or or Uncle Dari or Jagan, they actually go for Ivar from his life. Okay. Now, in this particular chapter, chapter four, uh, which is entitled "Small Choice," we find that R.G. develops a crush on Jagan, who seems quite comfortable with the extra attention and Jagan becomes a sort of male role model for R.G. as well as Digi, his brother. Okay. Now, his father meanwhile uh, was also in a relationship with an English girl and R.G. realizes that his father is hypocrite is a hypocrite, as he has the affair and is much closer to Jagan than to his own children. R.G. wonders whether his father is using Jagan to try and manipulate him. So, although R.G. was uh, finding a kind of consolation for his uh, suffering heart, in the company of Jagan, he also suspected that Jagan is something who is acting like a spy uh, assigned by his uh, father to keep a kind of vigil whether R.G., the homosexual, now a teenager, he is doing something wrong in the eyes of the uh, heteronormative society. Okay. Now, in section 5, that is based of all schools, uh, there Appa begins to suspect RG's sexuality and decides that RG needs to be transferred to and another school, and the name of the school is Victoria Academy, as he feels that this school will help change his son's sexual orientation. He 
Victoria Academy is run by Black Sai, the principal, who wishes to keep the school open for all ethnicities as against the proposal for making it exclusively a school for the Sinhalese. R.G. meets Nehan, a gay, oblique queer, and is one to stay away from him. But the two become friends instead, and R.G. is slowly and deeply attracted to Nehan. R.G. is to recite some poems in an event scheduled later, and this is important for retaining the inclusiveness of the school. R.G. and Snehan are beaten up every time R.G. forgets his life. Because this particular boy, Snehan and R.G. and their intimacy had actually, had actually, uh, was actually not very, uh, in, not, not very easily encouraged by others. And from that point of view, this kind of behavior also uh, tried to, uh, this kind of behavior also uh, made these two boys outsiders in a society that was also dominated by a kind of heterosexual ideology. Okay. And the last chapter, uh, here we uh, which is entitled actually Riot Journal and Epilogue. There we find that all these complexities uh, regarding sexuality of RG as well as his ethnic identity, uh, they gradually lead to a particular uh, juncture. Here the family uh, had to leave the country because they were Tamil minorities in the Singhali Sri Lanka and when the novel ends, uh, the family is leaving the country and RG is leaving the country with heavy heart because this particular country was a place that was not welcoming to a person uh, with alternative sexual preferences as well as to the persons who belong to ethnic minorities. So this, in short, is the is the is the summary of the boy, funny bo uh, of the book, funny boy, and uh, in course of the novel, the two main important scientists, as I have told you, they become quite very large. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful lecture. Uh, it was really uh, interesting. I was listening with rapt attention. All the chapters have been beautifully explained by you. And I think students have been immensely benefited by your lecture. Now I request uh, our participants, if they have any question on this, they can unmute themselves and directly ask the speaker or can put it in the chat box. Any question from the participants, from the students, scholars who have joined? So you have been acquainted with uh, many terminologies, okay, uh, they, uh, such as queer, then alternative uh, sexuality, then gay, lesbianism. So these are all uh, very uh, have cultural uh, weightage in our present day uh, literary uh, world. So I think the students must uh, have some uh, idea about what uh, such uh, cultural uh, loaded terms uh, we uh, carry um, forward their, I mean, will carry forward their uh, perception of the model. So I feel that uh, our, uh, our students must um, ask something if they find uh, or, uh, or must know something uh, from South about those terms particularly, which will help them 
not only to understand the text but also help them in their life studies. So over to you students and to the participants who are there to ask a few questions. We could take few questions, okay? So please. श्रीलंका बड़ हतो कम्यूनिटी ना थको से হয়তো করতে পারতো না তেমনি একটা ইঙ্গিত এখানে আমরা পাচ্ছি কেননা তখন যখন যে সময়ের কথা বলা হচ্ছে উনিশশো আশি এই রকম সময়ে অর্থাৎ এন্ড অফ দ্য টোয়েন্টি এইট সেঞ্চুরি তখনও কিন্তু হোমোসেক্সুয়ালিটি ততটা নর্মালাইজ হয়নি আমাদের ইন্ডিয়ান সাব সাবকন্টিনেন্টে এবং ততটা ততদিনে অলরেডি হয়ে গেছে ওয়েস্টার্ন ওয়ার্ল্ডে এল জি বিটি কিউ মুভমেন্টের ফলে সেখানে অনেক আন্ডারগ্রাউন্ড পার্ক তৈরি হয়েছিল সেখানে হোমোসেক্সুয়াল এক্সক্লুসিভলি যেতেন এবং অনেকেই তারা হোমোসেক্সুয়াল ম্যারেজ হতো যদিও সেটা আইন হিসেবে গোটা বিশ্বে আসেনি তবে অনেকটা নর্মালাইজ হয়ে গেছে এখন তো আমাদের ইন্ডিয়াতেও তা হয়ে গেছে তো তখনকার দিনে আমাদের দেশের যে এই আমাদের দেশ বা আমাদের সাবকন্টিনেন্টে শ্রীলঙ্কা আমাদের পাশেরই দেশ আমাদের সোসাইটিতে এটাকে কখনো একটা স্টিগমা একটা টাইম বলে মনে করা হতো তাই যদি না তিনি ওয়েস্টার্ন ওয়ার্ল্ডে বড় হতেন তবে হয়তো তিনি ওর হোমোসেক্সুয়ালিটিটাকে এত সহজে মেনে নিতে পারতেন না এবার বাড়ির অন্য কেউ মেনে নিতে পারছেন না রাধা আন্টি কিন্তু পারছেন এবং এই জন্য রাধা আন্টিকে ও খুব ভালোও লাগছে এবং পরে সেটা দেখো অনেকেই বলে সেলভাগুরাই অত বায়োগ্রাফিক্যাল নভেল অলসো হি অলদো হি ডিনায় টাইম ম্যানেজে কিন্তু দেখো তুমি দেখো সেলভাগুরাই নিজের শ্রীলঙ্কাতে যখন ছিলেন তখন কিন্তু তিনি ওপেনলি গে বিয়ার করে করতে পারেন কিন্তু সেখানে গিয়ে তিনি ম্যারেডেড ম্যান অ্যান্ড উইজ মাই লিভিং উইজ এ কাস্ট মেল কাস্ট ক্যানাডাতে এই দিক থেকে হয়তো মনে হতেই পারে যে দের ইজ এ ডিফারেন্স বিটুইন আওয়ার অ্যাপ্রোচ টু একটা হোমোসেক্সুয়াল হুম অ্যাপ্রোচ দা কালচার থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ থ্যাঙ্ক ইউ স্যার ইফ ইফ এনি মোর কোয়েশ্চেন ইজ দেয়ার স্টুডেন্টস ক্যান আস্ক দে ক্যান আস্ক ইন বেঙ্গলি অলসো তামিলদের মধ্যে যে যুদ্ধ হচ্ছিল সেই জন্য হচ্ছে তারা কানাডাতে রিমুভ করে তো স্যার ওরা কি সেখানে গিয়ে বেনিফিট হয়েছিল এখানে থেকে ক্যানাডাতে একটা বড় মাইগ্রেশন আছে আমাদের ইন্ডিয়ান সাবকন্টিনেন্ট থেকে ধরো মুম্বাইতে যে পার্সি কমিউনিটির লোকেরা ছিল তাদের বেশিরভাগই কিন্তু মানে ওখানে গিয়ে অন্তত ওদের এই যে এথনিক ভায়োলেন্সের মধ্যে তো করতে হয় ওখানে থাকলে তো একটা জীবন মরণ সমস্যা হচ্ছে কারণ ব্ল্যাক জুলাই যেটাকে বলে যেটাকে বললাম নাইনটিন এইটি থ্রিতে হয়েছিল সেই সময় যেভাবে তামিল দোকান পাট ভেঙে দেওয়া হচ্ছিল তামিল বাড়িগুলো তামিল লাগিয়ে দেওয়া হচ্ছিল এরপরে এর ফলে দে হ্যাড টু লিভ মানে কত টাকাটা কিন্তু একটি ব্যাপার তাই তো নয় শুধু ওই সময় তো শুধু হয়নি তারপরে একটা টানা বড় সময় ধরে এই কিন্তু এই আন্দেজ করতে পারে হুম একটা বিরাট কনটেক্ট আছে সরকারের আরে বুঝতে পারবে যে সফটওয়্যার দা দেখো 
আরজির ফ্যামিলি কিন্তু চলে যেতে পারে কিন্তু দে আর নট টু সামি দে আর অ্যাকচুয়ালি রিচ বিজনেস ম্যান এটা তারা সেটা অ্যাফোর্ড করতে পারে বাইরে গিয়ে সেটি বেশিরভাগ ফ্যামিলি কিন্তু যারা জাতনাতে থাকছে ওদের বিলং টু দা ওরা সেটা নষ্ট করতে পারে এই জন্য সে কিড নট অ্যাফোর্ড টু ডু এটাও মাথায় রাখতে হবে আরজি আরজির বিহেভিয়ার তো আর অ্যাকর্ডিং টু দ্য হোমো নর্মেটিক সোসাইটি মানে হেটেরো নর্মেটিক সোসাইটি অর্থাৎ যেটা হেটেরো সোসিয়ালিটিকে যে সোসাইটি নর্মাল মনে করে আর বাইরে কিছু দেখলেই সে মজার বিহেভিয়ার করছে একটা ছেলে কেন মেয়ে থাকে এইবার একটা ছেলে কেন ক্রিকেট খেলবে একটা ছেলে কেন হচ্ছে মেয়েদের ম্যাগাজিন করছে এই যে ব্যাপারগুলো এগুলো দেখে তাকে বারবারই বলা হতো আমি এবং এটা তো প্রথমে লোকে চোখে পড়েন তোমরা পড়েছো তনু যা বলে একজন আসবে হ্যাঁ বাইরে থেকে হুম সে বলবে যে ও কেন ছেলে ও কেন ব্রাইট থাকছে হ্যাঁ ও একটু ড্রুম সাজায় এই যে কিছু স্টিরিও টাইপগুলো আছে আমাদের কিছু মানে ওয়ার্ল্ড তো এইগুলো এইগুলো নর্মাল বলে আমরা মেনে নিয়েছি আমরা ছোটো থেকে উই আর টট ইন দ্য ওয়ে এবং যদি উই ডেভিয়েট ফ্রম দ্যাট নর্মাল তখনই ফানি এখানে ফানি ইন দ্য সেন্স অফ গে তো গে অ্যান্ড ফানি হ্যাঁ দিস টু ফ্রম সার টু সাম এক্সটেন্ট টু চিন টু ইচ আর সেটা আমরা ভেবে দেখলে বুঝতে পারি হ্যাঁ এই কথার মানেও কিন্তু অনেকটাই একটা এক্সুবার জলি জোভিয়াল এইরকম একটা ব্যাপার একটা <laughs> অভিনয় করেছে ছেলে হয়েও তার মেয়ে তোমরা এই আইডিয়াটা অনেকটা পাবে নবকীর্তন দেখতে পারো আর ম্যাড্রাস ক্যাফে দেখতে পারো সুদী সরকারের সিনেমা এখানে এই এই যে তামিল সুবিলোয়ারের ব্যাপারটা দ্যাট লেস টু দ্য ফিলিং অফ রাজীব গান্ধী অ্যাকচুয়ালি ওই ব্যাপারটা খুবই ভালোভাবে তামিলদের মধ্যে যে লড়াইটা সেটা দেখানো হয়েছে নোবেলটার মধ্যে তো স্যার মানে রিলেশনটা কি একটু আমি যেটা বলেছিলাম যে আরজির অবজেক্ট পজিশন ইজ ইজ ডাবলি ডিসকর্ড মানে হি হ্যাভ টু লিভ শিলং আমরা প্রথম থেকেই বুঝতে পারছি এখানে থাকতে পারবে বুঝলে না আসলে হোমোসেক্সুয়াল হওয়ার জন্য তার নিজের ফ্যামিলিতেই তার কোনো অ্যাকসেপ্টেন্স ছিল তার সোসাইটিতে নয় আর সেকেন্ডলি এই যে এথনিক মাইনরিটি হওয়ার জন্য অর্থাৎ 
একজন তামিল হওয়ার জন্য শ্রীলঙ্কাতে তাকে ছাড়তে হতো দেশ কারণ এখানে থাকলে মৃত্যু ভয় আছে এবার এই দুটো ব্যাপারকে কিভাবে এ করা হচ্ছে যে অল্টারনেটিভ সেক্সুয়ালিটির মানুষ হওয়ার জন্য সে একটা মার্জিনাল সাবজেক্ট পজিশনে থাকে অন্যদিকে এই এথনিক মাইনরিটি হওয়ার জন্য সে একই রকমভাবে একটা মার্জিনাল পজিশনে থাকে অর্থাৎ যাই হোক তামিল হিসেবে তার গোটা ফ্যামিলিটাই মার্জিনাল এবং মেন পথ সেটাই যে তাকে এখান থেকে চলে যেতে হলো কিন্তু অ্যাজ এ হোমোসেক্সুয়াল ইস সেপারেট ফ্রম দ্য কনজারভেটিভ শ্রীলঙ্কান সোসাইটি টু ক্যানাডা ইট অলসো এ কাইন্ড অফ এস্কেপ রুট ফর সাচ এটা কিন্তু শুধু পালানো নয় এটা এক ধরনের এটা এক ধরনের এস্কেপ ফ্রম দ্য কনফাইনমেন্ট অর আর কি কিন্তু এখান থেকে চলে গেলে এটা একদিক থেকে ওর ভালো হলো কারণ ও হোমোসেক্সুয়াল কারণ এখানে হয়তো সে সেই ট্রিটমেন্ট পেত না যেটা কিছুটা হলেও ভালো আর এখানকার যেটা সে ওখানে হয়তো ক্যানাডাতে পেতে পারে গোটা ফ্যামিলিকে তো যেতেই হলো কারণ আর যে হোমোসেক্সুয়াল হলেও সে বড় কথা সে একজন তামিল আর সিঙ্গলি চিজরা তামিলদেরকে এখানে গ্রহণ করছে বলো আর কিছু আছে বলো So, I would request now our head of the department, Rahul Bolivar, to wrap up the entire session. Over to you, Rahul. Thank you, sir. First of all, I would like to thank you both, sir, for this insightful lesson. And I think our collectivism as well as the teacher, we are all benefited from this lesson. And Scott has beautifully explained all the required terms and which are that are useful for understanding the concept of gender, sex, masculinity, femininity, or uh, patriarchy. These are the things which are really important to understand the text uh, as well as other things which has to do with the idea of gender. And, <coughs> Moreover, there are issues, there are things, there are chapters which are also elaborated uh, in a very lucid way. And I think students have also under, understood the thing. They have some questions regarding the text. And uh, it is not an easy task to teach or to explain the thing. It has something to do with gender or text in UD classes because the time itself is so much complex and it needs so much elaboration that we have to take to watch the introductory classes in order to understand full casually this kind of thing. Uh, the third has explained the thing quite effectively and beautifully, wonderfully and I think we are all benefited uh, from this kind of lecture and I believe in this book uh, will help us to understand the things as well. And I would like to invite her to our college so that she can visit our college physically and uh, teach our students in this book so that they can understand the things better in future days also. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone who have participated in this lecture series. And I think uh, in future days also we will be equally benefited for the from the lecture which will take the uh time for uh I think we will tell us in point not about the different lecture series but when they will take the thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you so much
so good one uh, tomorrow we will uh, be having for uh, showman jana's lecture for the students will be important right hello good one ha yes sir yes. Uh, he will be speaking on two block he is yes. from shivatra rekha college so i request all of you to be uh, here today uh, tomorrow and yes. that the next day we will have a class on the way of the world by vitin jay shamanto shamanto mukherjee so for this week we have uh, only two lectures in the next week let me announce that uh, perhaps on 30th we have a Uh, lecture on the hound of the basker hills um, by daisy mojinder yeah your yeah, link will be shared uh daisy mojinder from jhargram uh, raj college and we are also uh, hoping in fact i have been uh, uh, i have been informed by one of the speakers his name is atonu beda who is an assistant professor in reason till the chandra shekhar college he will be speaking on galiver struggles okay so uh, he has perhaps given his dates either on 2nd of uh, uh, june or 3rd of 3rd june perhaps and uh, hopefully i can uh, we can have another lecture on the shadow lines uh, by the end of the coming month so we hope that there will be three lectures more again on the week that begins with 30th and ends with June 4th or 5th. Okay. So be here tomorrow, our dear students. I think you are enjoying it. Okay. Uh, and uh, Tuglok is also a very interesting text. So you will be much benefited. Shoman Jana will be speaking very nicely tomorrow. Okay. Thank, so, you thank you all thank you all yeah, yeah. and uh, students of sixth semester are especially uh, requested to be present for tomorrow's lecture series because it is actually for them but also students of fourth semester will be benefited and also the second semester because you will be reading to block in the last sem okay so keep that in mind and not only that you will be having some knowledge about indian drama okay indian drama in english and you will have indian drama so be there it will do you good in your future okay